I'm Jenny Robertson, founder of the On Purpose Woman Global Community and the founder and publisher of On Purpose Woman Magazine. I'm here with Sophia Wren Nitsche to talk about her article in the May-June issue of On Purpose Woman Magazine. And Sophia, I want to start by thanking you for being with me today and tell our viewers a little bit about you and your work. Sure. My name is Sophia Wren. And I am a writer as well as somebody who helps people to write. And lately, I've also been helping people to organize their ideas using digital organization. So my big passion is helping people to get their stories out there, their ideas out there, whether that's in a book or for their business. Um, there's so many different ways you can put things out there. But the most important thing is that you actually get to do it because then you're going to get all the love coming back from you. Um, so that's my big passion. And thank you for following your big passion. You've mm -hmm. written a number of articles over the years for On Purpose Woman magazine, and they're always really good. And they're always, in my estimation, they're always a bit out there in like left field a bit from conventional thinking. You do oh, that cool. quite often. I don't know. I'm sure you must know that, which I really appreciate because you give people an opportunity to look at things a bit differently. And especially with the even the title of your article in this issue is called Ungoaling ungoaling, not yeah. hanging on too hard to your goals. So have you ever, is that a word? Is ungoaling really I think a word? I, I might've made it out. I like to make up words. Yeah. So yeah. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen it before, but it makes such sense. So let's start out kind of with the basics. What is ungoaling for you? Yeah. So I'm somebody with a history of setting a lot of goals and I feel like, yeah, like you said, I kind of am introducing sort of a left field type of thought because I think culturally in the United States you know we really respect goals and they're very respectable to have very civilized for people to have their goals and plan out their year and try to hit those goals and and everything and it's kind of like the more the better you know the more things you can do the better um and not to say that that's wrong but I think that there's a difference between just doing goals for the sake of it and kind of getting into the hustle bustle without a real purpose, a real deeper purpose. And then that could give you the experience that I had, which was I would be doing all these things, but kind of always be feeling like I wasn't doing enough. And that's not really sustainable. Um, so ungoaling is like when you decide, okay, okay, I've got, I've been really stacking on the goals, but it's time for us to remove some of these bricks. <laughs> these are becoming a weight. These are becoming heavy It'd be nice to breathe and maybe just be present where we're at. And maybe it's not all about going forward into the goal. Maybe it's okay to have a little breathing room. So that's, it's either the process of removing goals or even maybe embracing a life, uh, a lifestyle of going without some goals for a while, holding it loose. Yeah. Well, you, you said that you were starting to feel a little heavy and I guess weighed down by the goals. Was there something specific showing up? Like what, what actually inspired you to take this big leap? Because it is a pretty big leap. Yeah, you know, I think that a lot of things got put into perspective over the last couple of years. You know, there's been so many different life changes that I've been through. We also had the pandemic with everybody. Um, and I feel like the the real kicker was, when my father passed away in 2021. And I think a lot of people go through grieving differently, but for me, I just didn't really have the capacity to do all the things that I was doing before, or they didn't really feel the same. And so I really had that question of like, why force yourself to do this, you know? And I needed to have a good reason for that. And for a lot of things, it was just like, I guess I don't, <laughs> I guess this guy's not gonna evolve. I don't do that. And it's not bringing me joy anyway. Not a whole lot is at the moment, but I just was like, let's, well, let's make the hunt about finding my joy. You know, let's just completely do a U-turn and maybe it's about being present. Maybe it's about slowing down. And that became more of my focus on really having a good relationship with myself. And that's not about doing anything. It's not about achieving a goal to be better. It's about literally just trying to accept and love me as I am now. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, it's a goal, but it's also the complete opposite because it doesn't require me to do anything. And in fact, it's me telling myself, you need to let go of trying to prove yourself through all the things that you're doing. You need to, if, if that's been going on, we need to not do that. So that was really the impetus for me to put the microscope on this area of my life and also kind of give myself permission because 
something like that. I think it's a good opportunity to give yourself permission to um, do what you need to do to take care of yourself. Yeah. I really commend you for coming to that decision, especially at, at a young age. You know, I mean, some of us, you know, might be in our 60s before we start to go, wait a minute, is this all there is? Is this really what I want to be doing? Now, it was kind of forced on you in a way. Mm-hmm. And I guess, you know, it was how you handled your grief. Mm-hmm. So people can learn to do it without going through that, right? And that's what you wrote about. People can learn if it feels like it's something that would benefit them if they resonate with that. Yeah. But, you know, other people might just take their grief and just become more of a workaholic or just kind of bury their emotions yeah. in that. It sounds like you were able to just sit with whatever yeah. was going on. I was, yeah. And I was able to see some people in my life do, do things the workaholic way mm-hmm. and it didn't seem like they were super happy. <laughs> so, you know, you kind of can observe people sometimes and, and be like, okay, well, I felt like I couldn't really even get my power behind it to be mm-hmm. a workaholic. Like, I think a part of me wanted to go that way, but it was literally like, okay, it's being taken out of my hands. I can mm-hmm. fight this mm-hmm. or I can embrace it, you know? Surrender, right? Just surrender. Yeah. But it ended up being good because I did kind of embrace it. And I think now I'm just a lot pickier about what I decide is a goal. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a lot more strategic about it in terms of um, taking the time to really like think about it. I think before I would be like, oh, that's, that's in the idea. Let's jump into action. You know, and if I'm not moving, then what's going on? Mm-hmm. Whereas now I think having that time where I really slow down, it's kind of shown me the benefit of taking that extra minute, extra day, extra hour, whatever you need to really like journal about it or talk to someone about it, or just kind of get in touch with, it's okay if this takes a long time for me to do, you know, maybe it's not the priority right now, but just sort of exploring, why do I want to do it? Is this really important to me? How, how hard is it really going to be? You know, is this really going to be a lot of effort? Because it's okay to say I'm not up for it right now. And I had to really learn that, that like, there is a limit to what I can do. I think I just never really gave myself that uh, self-awareness you know, I think I would often maybe kind of beat myself up a little bit if there was something I couldn't do and feel like I should be able to do it. And it began that way um, after my my dad passed because I was comparing myself to the before and mm. how energized I used to be. But I, I, I just was like, this isn't helpful, you know? So over time, it was a habit. I started to shake a little bit more and just embrace like you, ha- I have a, what I started calling it was bandwidth. I have a limited amount of bandwidth. It's not just like energy or time. It's like my brain can only hold so many things at once. And it was a smaller amount of things than before. And I just had to like meet myself there and and just decide, you know, like, yeah, if it turns out you're trying to do something and it doesn't work out, let's not be hard on ourselves because the goal isn't the most important thing in the world. You know, the most important thing in the world is that I got to take care of myself and I got to be my own cheerleader and my own best friend. And I was just talking to a best friend today who was talking about how he hadn't accomplished all these things he wanted to accomplish. And I was like, hey, but listening to you, I heard you did this and this and this. And I'm going to yell at you about how awesome you are. Like, <laughs> recognize what you did do, you know, and just sort of flip it to to not be all about the future goals, but like what's good here. That has to be the priority. Yeah. I mean, it's been so ingrained in us from a very young age that, of course, that's we have to have goals. And I don't know if you've ever heard me talk about this, but <clears throat> I haven't done this for this is probably before the pandemic. I guess it was the last time I went, but I used to go to the this beach in North Carolina where I've been right. going since I was 12. But I would rent a house by myself and I would stay typically three weeks. Sometimes it would be edging onto four weeks. Yeah. And I would hit this list of things I was going to do while I was there. And it would be everything I hadn't done in the last year, right? Sometimes wow. we do the same things that were on the list from the previous trip to the beach. But I would also have this daily list of everything I wanted to do, or some of it was what I thought I should do. And it would it would be like spiritual practices. It would be like use my essential oils. I even had on my to-do list, Sophia, walk on the beach. That was on my to-do list. Mm-hmm. And I 
I remember going, in fact, it was uh, close to one of the last times I was there. It wasn't the last time. And I decided I'm not going to have a list this time. I'm just not going to have a list. And because mm. I would look at the list and I would think, oh, walk on the beach. I love to walk on the beach. Right. We needed a damn check mark. I mean, I got check marks for doing these things. And and it's it's how many check marks I got in a day. And I'm on vacation, right? Yes, and so exactly. I, I I remember going out one day and just deciding, I'm going to walk over there. I've never seen that before. And I started walking. And by the end of my walk, I had walked 12 miles because wow. I was having such a great time just meandering around. Wow. And, it. and I had never done that before because it was always going to walk to the pier. I think that's 2.4 miles, you know, just, and so yeah. it's a long-winded explanation, but man, it's, it's wow. hard to let go of that kind of stuff. Cause I had the same list at home. I didn't just do the list there. I had the same kind of list at home where everything was a task. And yet there's yeah. this part of my brain that doesn't want to do tasks and they fight each other. It's like, you can't make me do that. Well, you're going yeah. to do it or, you know, or else. And so I so appreciate what you're talking Absolutely. about. Yeah, yeah, no, I, and I, and on my off time, especially it's for me, especially when I really need to rest, that's when my mind will be extra loud. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know if you're allowed to just watch this show. Like you should fold laundry while you watch it or something, you, you know, like, it's like that, that voice that's hard on me yes. is extra loud when I most need the rest. Mm -hmm. And then it is weird that I want to just follow my impulse to something that feels good. And I'll be questioning it. Like, are you sure you should go outside? I don't know. Or should you bring a book? Yeah. And just making it so much more complicated than it needs to be. And it, it is this, the school teacher or something like, we've got to have a program. The punisher, are you, you know, like, like, you better do it right. Yeah. You've got to have yeah, it. Like, are you on, are you on track? I don't know. Is there a schedule I can reference? <laughs> You've been in my head. You've been living in my head for sure. You know, yeah. uh, a number of years ago, I remember so, so intently, I was laying on the couch on a Sunday afternoon with the clicker and I was watching Law and Order reruns and I'd been on it was like my third one in a row. Yeah. And my husband walks in and I said to him immediately, I didn't get anything. I haven't gotten anything done today. Like somehow I had, I was supposed to justify laying on the couch watching TV <laughs> to him who hadn't said a word, right? Yeah. Because he said something like, well, you know, it is Sunday. <laughs> what I realized in that moment is that the reason I had the clicker in my hands, I wasn't watching Law and Order that closely. I was clicking around because if I was clicking around, I wasn't really watching TV. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a bizarre thing in my mind that said, you can't really sit here and watch three TV shows in a row because that is so wrong. But you're just kind of relaxing for a minute, you know, yeah. or just turn off the TV and read a book on the couch. No, that really is not working. If I turn off the TV and not even clicking and I'm just reading a book. I mean, it was so yeah. ingrained in me. And it's it's a sickness kind of, you know, it's like this unlearning it's, thing. So you have, you're unlearning tough. this. Yeah. Unlearning yeah. This. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. And it's 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 I feel like it's very relatable. There's probably a lot of people who could relate to that to that. Cause I know I can. And yeah, it's so it's so tough because then it's with you don't have that ability to unhook from all of the goals and things like that. Um, at least some of the time, because some of us really do get a lot of joy from the things that we're doing. Yeah. So it's not oh, yeah. wrong to enjoy that even in your off time to have tasks you want to do. But sometimes you just have to give yourself that free reign to exercise the muscle or else it gets kind of shriveled like that. Mm -hmm. And you can't even watch TV now, you know? And, and then it's sort of like, it's like, we're not on the same level as all the other people in the world because everybody else is allowed to go watch three episodes of TV and, you know, we're not going to bother them about it, but we get our, <laughs> our own pace, you know? So that's where yeah. it's like, it's important for the balance and for just showing ourselves that we're loved unconditionally, even if we just lay up in bed <laughs> for a whole day or a whole weekend, a whole week, I know. maybe we needed it. Maybe on your, you know, trip, your vacation trip, you just don't want to have a to-do list. You know, I think I was exhausted when I got great. there. I mean, I was just, cause I've been doing and doing and doing, and then I get oh, there and I needed three days to just sleep and rest and gaze at the ocean, you know, not even walk. Just gaze. Vacations are, are, I, yeah, I feel the same way when I go on vacation and and I'm even one of those people that like, if I go somewhere where there's museums and stuff, 
sometimes I just don't have the bandwidth for a museum. I mean, I might like one a week or something, but not one every day, not multiple ones a day. That would just yeah. be too much. I really enjoy just wandering around and yeah, I think that that's just fantastic. But then the question is like, can we let ourselves do a little bit more of that when we're back in our home environment, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, it was and challenging. It was like kind of make the luxurious every day. Like, would that be possible? I don't know. That's still a question for me, you know, because it's, Good question. it's kind of, you know, kind of pushing your edge of like, am I going too crazy here? <laughs> I got stuff I got to do, mm -hmm. but um, I think yeah. we know the difference intuitively though, don't you, between, you know, I know I've learned to tell, <laughs> I can't fool myself any longer because I know myself so well that, okay, yeah, I am really just goofing off and I'm avoiding <laughs> that thing that I'm not sure how to do. So let's just go get that handle because I'm not really tired right now. I'm just avoiding that or I'm not really hungry. I just want to go eat something that will soothe my frayed whatever from trying to deal with something on my computer, you know. Uh, I think true. we know the okay. difference between that yeah. and, you know, oh, I'm, I really just need to shut it, shut it all down. So I'll know because I won't really, it's kind of like you were saying when you weren't really watching Law and Order. Like I'll know because I won't really be present enjoying whatever it is. Yeah, like not like permission to even be present. Yeah. on my phone and I'll be like, you're not even really enjoying, what'd you just spend half an hour on? Like, yeah. quit stop this. <laughs> yeah. That could have been a really delicious nap, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You well, know, for the record, I've gotten really good at doing nothing and being really good with it. So I have, I cool. think- conquered that little mountain or little foothill there that's beautiful I think that would be a great t-shirt hmm? I think that would be a great t-shirt hmm. I've gotten really good at doing nothing like I think just across <laughs> yeah. yeah impart that especially to more women right just are you good at yeah. doing anything how do you have a little palm tree yeah <laughs> little palm tree picture yeah. a hammock coffee, hammock yeah yeah. I love that. I seriously, let's dig in more to your article. And then I realized I wrote down, you use a metaphor of digging for buried treasure as a way to explain this process that you're using. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So like I said, I, I used to be kind of like a, I call it like a speed demon. And I still sometimes find myself in that cadence of just wanting to zoom, 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 zoom towards getting things done. And that's something I got into like when I was really young, it was really fun to like run. I couldn't run in the hallways at school, but I could walk really fast, like almost running. Um, Cause I wanted to get where I was going and read my book and move some pages and get further in. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of preference for doing things quickly um, has, uh, a con of, okay, so my analogy with the digging is if you're trying to dig for treasure, you have to dig in the right spot. So if I don't take the time to figure out exactly where I'm going to put my energy, it doesn't matter if I go dig a really big hole right there. So if all I'm focused on is speed, then I could just be, dig a million holes all over like a lawn mm -hmm. and never hit the spot where that treasure actually is. So you can conserve your energy instead of digging 10 holes, conserve your energy and just like really look for that one. And then you can dig a hole there and, you know, you only use 10% of your energy, but you'll actually get where you're trying to go. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it looks like you're spending more time doing nothing because you're not in action. You know, you're not in digging mode but you are doing things, you know, reflecting, walking around the beach. I'm sure you got ama amazing insight, you know, somewhere yeah. in your consciousness from either the rest or even during it, you know, when take, people take a shower, people get amazing insights. Um, so yeah, when you, when you're more rested, when you're more filled up, then you're going to be better, better able to do that. I also find that sometimes ideas recur maybe over a year. And I just don't have the bandwidth to actually tackle it that time. But I know future me is going to do it. I write it down. I, you know, I keep it organized, but I don't expect myself to go do it then. And I figure if it's still boomeranging back, you know, a year later, then that's a really good hole for me to dig. And it'll be really worth mm -hmm. the time, you know, so both things. So kind of taking your time to rest and rejuvenate, but also letting it be okay to have things on the back burner. And, um, 
that's just more evidence that it's going to be good when you finally get to it. You don't have to beat yourself up that it's not done yet. It's just, you're gathering information and you're going to be really targeting all your effort to dig the holes in the right places for you. And it's, it's a really great idea to assign it to your future self. And I know too, when I have a great idea and I start getting like wanting to get into the weeds with it, but I know I don't have the time to get into the weeds, not even sure if it's mine to do yet. Yeah. If I can place it somewhere or you know, I will come back to it at some point, it'll leave easily, you know, but yeah. if I don't, if I don't have a spot for it somewhere and that's the organization stuff that you teach as well, it gives people spots to put those ideas yeah. So that I know it's not lost. And if it's meant for me to do it, it will resurface, but I'll be able to go find it if I want to. So exactly. Yeah, that's such a great point. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's really important to write it down and, you know, treat it seriously, but like with that permission of like, yeah, future self can come over to this corner. This is where all the, all the big ideas are. And we're yeah. going to get maybe, maybe having a time of the year where you, review those kind of things, mm -hmm. you know, so that, you know, it's not going to fall in the cracks. I find that kind of helps me with my self-trust is like every season I'll kind of revisit my list of ideas or whatever. And it's like, okay, well, we're still not going to do them yet, but they're here for the next time. Next season we'll, we'll check in again, you know, we'll see what happens. So that way, yeah, you have that self-trust and you can let it go that it's somewhere. It's fine. It's, it's not, it's not that I'm ignoring it. It's uh, just, yeah, it's in its place, ready for me when I get to it. Yeah. And what you've been saying and what you wrote about, it, what I hear is that there are two things that really need to happen to be able to do this ungoaling. One is to be curious mm. and the other is to be gentle with yourself. So, mm. you know, be curious as to like you were saying, do I, why do I think I even want this? Is it really mine? Is it, I just wrote an article for this next issue on what is mine to do. Cause that's cool. been a refrain for me now for about six or seven years of asking myself that question. Cause not everything is, I used to think it was, you know, mm -hmm. if I do it, I'm taking it away from somebody else getting to do it. If it's not mine to do so, but I that's love this idea of just being curious about your life and the things that you say that you want, and then being gentle with yourself when you decide not now, or maybe not ever, you know? Yeah. I like, thanks for pulling that up. I think that curiosity, it, it's so important and it connects to an idea that I've been pondering lately, which is just sort of that it's good to know that there are gaps in our knowledge about who we are and everything, you know, to, to not assume that, you know, everything about everything, including yourself right. and your motivations and your goals, you know, cause there are things, there are layers of things and yeah, sometimes you might you might think something is is going to be like I use the example in the article of there was a book I wanted to write and I really felt like this is just the epitome of self-love to write this book. This is just me showing myself I love myself. I'm going to write this book. But it became like a curse and a burden because I had so many other things having to do with my dad's passing away that I had to do like legally to do. And that was really blowing a lot of air uh, on me. You know, that really was stressing me out. And so to to then try to wrap my mind around this big project, um, it didn't feel loving. It felt it felt mean <laughs> to oh. expect myself to do all this other stuff. You know, it didn't feel fun. Um, like you said, it was somebody telling you to take a walk when the fact that they're telling you to do it is just stressing you out. So um I had to really let go of that expectation and realize that it's maybe the book wasn't about maybe doing the book wasn't about self-love or at least not right now. You know, I'll, I'll love myself enough to keep it in mind for the future. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the most self-loving thing will be give myself a break and yeah, ungoal, unhook that goal from the expectations of today. And yeah, give myself a little space, a little grace and the gentleness and but if I hadn't, if I had assumed that that decision I had made before was coming from a like absolute right black and white place that like, no, doing the book is self-love. If I let go of this goal, it means I don't love myself. If I had kept with that original meaning and left no possible gap for new information, then I would have been so miserable and it would have been so, so weird to be miserable in that fashion for 
under the flag of self-love, like I'm making my life harder for myself, <laughs> but it very easily could have happened. So that's where I think it's really yeah. good to just like stay open-minded to information. Yeah. Stay curious because yeah, there could be something that we don't know even about our own self. Mm -hmm. And it's not always mm -hmm. obvious. It's very easy to convince ourselves. We, we know a lot. <laughs> so yeah, we think we have a lot at least. <laughs> Well, give yeah. us a snapshot of what your life is like, how it's different once you started unplugging, ungoaling, and breaking that little tie to everything. What's different? Yeah, I think what's different is I feel like I still do get a lot of things done. Like I definitely have kind of targets for myself, but I feel like it's much like fewer and far between. And when things kind of drop off, a lot of times there's either two things that happens. One, I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, well, you know what? turns out I don't really care that that dropped off. Mm -hmm. Let's just leave it for now. <laughs> I guess I got too much on my plate and that's fine. Um, or yeah, there's another thing I'm thinking like, man, I really don't want to not, I don't want this one project to fall in the cracks though. Like that's not good that that's not getting attention, you know? And I really take a lot of time to, um, see what is it that I need, you know, put the focus more on myself mm -hmm. instead of being all about the pushing being like, okay, what can I provide myself with in terms of support to get that thing done? And again, just continuing to forgive myself and put in, try to put in perspective and remember that like, you know, you're probably really the only one that is holding yourself to the standard that you're holding yourself. You know what I mean? Like, even, even things like the IRS or whatever, like they, people are late filing those things all the time. Um, so like just, there's so many things in life that there is a little wiggle room. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but it's, I, it's about me with my own wiggle room. I feel like that's the real game right now is like, what, what about me and my relationship to myself and being the mean person as I watch TV or whatever, like what, what, what in that relationship can I fiddle with a little bit. So that way I can feel more at ease because I have found that like when I'm more at ease, then I can go do something really fast. But if it's, if I'm going to make a big production out of it, that's when I'm going to start feeling overwhelmed or maybe frozen or um, maybe do something so fast. I make a mistake, mm -hmm. you know? So I really do try to pay attention to like how I'm feeling and those subtleties of is this just procrastination or do I really need to kind of take a breath? And because I am naturally kind of built for speed, I do need to usually um, take a breath is what I usually need. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sophie, if there's someone watching this, who's inspired by your choices, what's one step you might recommend that they kind of get started with ungoaling? Yeah. Well, I'm such a big proponent of journaling or if you, prefer, if you're more of a talker, there are so many apps now that you can do transcriptions, but I recommend just sort of like brain dumping all the things that you're holding yourself to right now, you know, that you feel like you're dropping the ball on and just like lay it all out on the table and maybe just set it aside for an afternoon, really give yourself permission to run away from it and then come back and maybe look at that list. When you have it in paper and by using a transcription app, you can talk it out so that you get it all on paper, all on the computer. Then you can just look at the list and then just like prioritize, like this is more important than that. This is more important to that. And just really file some things away from later, because if you're feeling overwhelmed um, or resonating with any of the things that we said, then you probably need to give yourself a little bit of a break for now on something, you mm -hmm. know, it's one thing. Um, so yeah, just giving yourself, maybe just having that kind of brain dump process and then a reordering of it can help you remember what's really the priority and um the other stuff that's lower priority like let a few things go for now and explore that that uh might be uncomfortable but give it a shot <laughs> it's what if good there's a 12 step program what would you call that for overachievers or something I right so <laughs> you know overachievers anonymous <laughs> yeah there's there should be just like i, I think, think there should be one for recovering good girls right yeah and like workaholics or yeah. There may oh, be yeah. something, I don't know, but. Yeah, I like it. Most I importantly, to... I want that t-shirt. Yeah, there you go. I want, I want to tell anyone watching this that you can read Sophia's article, the text, the um, 
link to the video, I'm sorry, the link to the magazine is in the text of this video. And you can read the entire article where she goes into more detail about some things that she did and how it worked out than we've talked about today. We've talked about a lot of things today that weren't in the article. And that's why I love doing these chats because we can go a little bit deeper and tap into our writer's brilliance even more. So how can our viewers find out more about you? Um, you can check out my website at sophiaren.com. I've got a whole lot of good things there. Okay. And that uh, link is also in the text of this video. So anything special coming up you'd like to share with us? We just started our digital organization class. Um, it's a membership for three months over the summer. So if anybody wants to do that, that could be a good place to file away your um, ideas for later. Um, so yeah, that just started up. And I think that's going to be the main event of the summer. Okay. And I'm in that and I'm really appreciating it. Um, it's real we're early on. It just started this week and the price is so, so reasonable. And it's um that's all reported, right? So people don't if they've missed anything, they can just jump right yeah. in. So that is that on your website as well? Yes. Okay. Should be able to find that right at the top. Thank you. Wanna leave us with a final thought about all this? Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about giving ourselves permission. And sometimes we're waiting on other people to give us permission. But, you know, just give yourself a little breathing room to make that final decision on how you want your life to go. Great. We'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sophia, for sharing just super helpful information. And you're always I think you're so wise beyond your years, but you're also just an old soul. So I'm not even going to say that anymore. And I'm <laughs> sharing it so beautifully with all of us. And I want to thank anyone watching the Real Women Real Purpose talk show for more information on the On Purpose Women Global Community and magazine. Uh, you can click on the link below as well. And for more interviews with amazing women living their lives on purpose, check out our YouTube channel. And the link is also in the chat of this video. Thanks again for watching. Y'all. Bye. Thank you.